Today in the 5 Minute Saltwater Aquarium Guide, you got dinos, it seems like doom, but we're gonna turn that all around. This is a battle that can be won. Hey, I'm Ryan, your host of Beers TV in the 5 Minute Saltwater Aquarium Guide. This is a clear, simplified, and direct path to setting up that first successful reef tank. Today, if you're watching this, it's probably because you've realized what you're dealing with is not cyano, but dinos, which tend to look a little bit more like bubbly snot than slime, depending on the type that you have, reduce or disappear at night, and then come back when the lights are on. But most importantly, nothing you seem to do sets them back or eliminates them from the tank. However, the community has produced some paths which seem to work in a pretty high percentage of cases. The most important thing here is to respect this won't be a quick process. Let it take its time and understand this is just one of the lessons of reefing. It took months for this problem to develop and it might take months to get out. If you're satisfied with progress rather than quick wins, you'll be more successful. There is one caveat to that. A properly installed and tuned UV sterilizer can actually be an end game solution on its own or even preventative measure, but there are no guarantees. UV sterilizers are most effective when the dinos appear to disappear at night, break up into the water column, and then reappear when the lights come on. If you go with a UV sterilizer, I strongly recommend the Pentair units, which have distinct flow ratings for bacteria and protozoa. A UV sterilizer actually has to be tuned to the system. For instance, a 25 watt Pentair is good for up to 130 gallons. It needs 470 to 780 gallons an hour, meaning that it processes most of the water in the tank every 10 to 15 minutes to keep those populations of dinos down. That said, other types of dinos stay on the surface of the rock and sand and unaffected by UV, and why some reefers find UV to be an instant solution and others don't. So outside of UV, we're gonna look at this as a four step process. First step is test nitrate and phosphate. If you're looking at double zeros, that might be part of the problem. Well, not proven, the current general consensus is dinos are at least partially caused by very low nitrate and phosphate in the system. It's believed in this environment that they're able to outcompete other organisms for resources and just tend to take over surfaces and explode their population. Zero nitrate and phosphate levels at least seems to be one of the very common characteristics of those who run into dino problems. If you are reading double zeros, raising nitrate and phosphate can be done by increasing feedings, decreasing the efficiency of various filters, or simply dosing nitrate directly with something like Brightwell's NeoNitro or NeoFos. In any case, make adjustments until your levels are consistently anything above zero. My favorite nitrate test kit is the NIOS, and HANA Ultra Low Range Phosphate Checker is my favorite testing tool for phosphate. Special note for any of you that are carbon dosing or using anything like bio pellets, I would stop during this process if only to let the nutrient levels rise, but also because some theorize the organic carbon levels could play a role in this. Step two is now that you're reducing the populations and maintaining nutrient levels where the other organisms have a fighting chance, it's time to start dosing competitive organisms. In this case, dosing heterotrophic bacteria like Dr. Tim's Waste Away, Microbacter 7, or Vibrant. It's hard to definitively say how these work, but some are believed to outscavenge nutrition. Some likely outcompete surface area or territory, and some may even be aggressive enough to consume other organisms. But in any case, when used properly, these have all been used to beat dinos very effectively. In fact, often used as a cocktail together or dosed on alternate days. I wish I could give you the perfect recipe here, but it hasn't been commonly agreed on yet, and almost certainly different between the different types of dinos in individual tanks. Other than that, it's likely gonna take an aggressive approach. My suggestion is to try one and scale it up or the frequency of dose over time and then add another if that doesn't work. But these are types of bacteria that seem to be the ultimate solution for many reefers. Step three, you're going to physically remove as much as possible, as often as possible, preferably daily until you win the battle. Some types of dinos only live in colonies in the rocks or sand, so removal means siphoning it out. Storing it up will probably not have the desired effect. Other types of dinos can be filtered out of the water column, particularly when they tend to break up at night when the lights are off. In this case, changing out your filter socks every morning will help. Automatic filter media rollers like the roller mat are very effective at keeping populations down as well. On our XXL 750, we had dinos when we were going through a roll every few days, but it was actually when we added the temporary UV sterilizer, which really changed the whole thing. You may also want to consider using something like a BRS reactor and a 5 micron depth sediment filter like the RO-Save.Zs to reduce the populations as much as possible. This kind of thick sediment filter will be much more effective than a filter sock. Step four is once you and your army of bacteria start winning the battle, one of the things you can do to help them win is wrap the tank in something black and do a three to four day total blackout. We're looking to block out as much light as humanly possible. Dinos are photosynthetic and will have a major setback during that period with no light. 
At this point, you'll give your bacterial troops time to take over some of that much needed territory. After that, keep doing what you're doing and simply be patient. Nothing good in a reef tank happens fast, so it took you months to get to this point. It's helpful to think that it might take as long to get out. With this overall approach, you should see progress in a matter of weeks. Learning everything about dinos can be a science project of its own and really beyond what a first year reefer is really going to dig into. But if you're game, one of the best things you can do is join the hashtag AskBeersTV group on Facebook and ask for help. I also post a link to the research the team put together in the video description so you can check out that if you're ready to put in a few hours of research. There are people on Reef to Reef really digging into this if you're ready for that next level. So there's a lot of discussion out there and it evolves every day because this topic is not fully understood yet. These last few episodes have been some of my favorites because it really gets past what to do when things are going great and deals with what to do when they aren't. In the next episode, what to do when the corals are dying or simply don't look healthy, it's probably not what you think. In fact, I know it isn't. And the entire five minute guide is always available here. But if you wanna know what to do about less than stellar coral health, and you should because it will happen at some point, this is it.